This is lesson one with electricity two. We are covering safety and we're going to be talking about the different types of safety concerns dealing with an HVAC field. We're going to start out talking about lockout tagout. This is a tag which is used to lock out different types of equipment where we can use to um, make the equipment unusable because you're working on it. These are uh, tags that's used, which this one says danger, uh, do not operate uh, lockout tag. These are different types of, many different types of tags. This is another one, equipment that says do not operate and have a place where you can put your name in a department. On the back side, you could put a, a description of what the problem or reason why you're servicing the equipment. And of course, this is the tag, but you need to have a lock. And the locks itself um, comes in many different colors and configurations based on what you're using it for. And if you notice that we have a red, a green, yellow, a gold color, orange. But these locks are used to lock out equipment. And the reason why we have different colors is because to be able to identify who is working on equipment, what technician or building engineer is working on the equipment. So if you go through, each technician will have their own color, so be able to identify. This particular one, it has danger locked out, do not remove. And of course, you can put your name on the um, equipment also so they would know who lock it is if they don't know the color. So the color is just an easy way to identify um, the equipment and who's working on the equipment. The purpose of lockout tagout is to protect the, uh, the technician or other people who may be working on equipment from operating equipment when it's in an unsafe condition. So it's very critical that we understand about the principles of locking out and tagging out the equipment. So here's a couple of things. You need a lock, you need a tag, you need to have a description of why it's locked out and who is uh, working on the equipment. And also a date, and sometime you even can put the um, estimated uh, date or time when the equipment should be up and running to let people know um, that it will be locked out for a certain amount of time. This is for safety so the equipment doesn't start up. So this is used for locking out, um, let's say disconnect, but to make that work, many times there will be multiple uh, technicians working on uh, one piece of equipment. So instead of everyone putting uh, one lock and is locked out, each uh, technician will be able to lock the equipment out themselves. So for example, let's say an electrician, a pipe fitter, a sheet metal worker, uh, let's say a mechanic, they're all working on the same piece of equipment and they all want to protect themselves so they all will have their own lock. So basically if they will take their lock and they will put it around this hasp. This hasp basically will open up to go around the disconnect. So there's only one um, connection on the disconnect, but everyone will put their lock on the equipment. So they can have multiple tradesmen working on the equipment. And it could keep going up to six. Now, if there's more than six, uh, construction workers or technicians working on the piece of equipment, they just grab another hasp, go around this, and they will lock out the hasp with multiple locks. So it can be as many technicians as possible. Uh, you can imagine, based on how many um, hasps to use in locking out the equipment. So lockout tagout is an important aspect of safety. Other areas of locking out. Let's say you want to lock out a uh, power cord. 
the equipment has a power cord, you don't want no one to plug it in. Then we use maybe one of these. This will actually go over the power cord and the, uh, the plug will go inside of this and it would lock it out based on putting the, uh, it's the side of the plug inside of this, closing it up and then attaching a lock on this. Okay. Well, they also, if you really wanted to, they can add a, a hasp so multiple trades can work on this. They make lockouts for breakers. This is one type. So that every manufacturer that have a special type breaker um, will make a lock for it. Uh, some way to shut it down. Here's a different manufacturer type of um, and you can see that the configuration of it. Other type of devices, let's say you have a, a valve you need to lock out. And equipment don't want water to, or the valve to open for steam or water or fluids to go through. This what fits over the handle. Is, so in other words, they could try to turn it, and, but it would just spin. They would use a lock here to lock out the, the valve. So other types of um, things you need to be concerned with, what we call personal protection equipment, and, or PPEs. Some of the things that we, we need to protect your ears by using earplugs. The way this works, you would take, this will go inside the ears, but it's a proper way to do it. This type you will twist and it will compress to a very small size, but it will expand slowly. Wearing safety gloves to protect your hands. And there's many different types of safety gloves, but make sure the type of safety glove you have will um, protect your hands and be able to work uh, freely. Because some gloves are very thick and uh, bulky and you have a tendency to want to take them off because uh, they don't fit well. You can't do your job as well as you would like to. But it's important to have the right glove for the right job. Certain type of gloves are used for uh, working with high temperature. So this is basically like welding gloves. This is used to um, wear when you have very hot items. Of course, there's rubber gloves you can use to um, protect yourself from chemicals, and that's important too. Now, safety glasses. At all times, at all times, you must have safety glasses. As a matter of fact, in school, anytime you go to the lab, you must have safety glasses on. Um, keep them clean. Keep them, uh, if they get scratched up, um, buy another pair. But safety glasses and goggles is important. Also, wearing respirators protect from dust and chemicals. They make many different types. Some are designed to filter out dust. Some other designed to filter out uh, films like from paints or other solvents. And the best type to get, the one that has two straps on it. One to go on the back, of the nap of your neck, the other on your, uh, the back of your head at the top, which give you tension in two locations as it fits on. They will have a little spring at the top of it, which is mold, which you can mold around your, your nose to f make a very good fit. And of course, you need to fit around your uh, mouth and nose to protect from uh, breathing, from any type of uh, uh, particulates in the air. Other types of safety we need to be concerned with. With the, when we're dealing with chemicals and dealing with uh, other types of 
devices, we need to use what we call the Material Safety Data Sheets, or uh, MSDS. This MSDS is a booklet of any chemicals you're dealing with, so if there's uh, it became exposed to something harmful, the information for you about that chemical will be listed in this and kept in this book. And so every job you have, or you should have this, or you go to supply houses, always ask for the sheet to go along with this because they have it. There's some websites that actually will have um, uh, information for you too that you can uh, get. So basically this got a guy that explains how it works and the purpose of it. It goes into the different type of physical data, the hazardous ingredients, the chemical identification. It goes into uh, fire and explosion data, health hazards data, uh, reactive data, spill and leak procedures, and special protection information, what you need to wear to protect yourself. As you go through, like I say, it would be listed out like acetylene. It would have this special uh, cast number. It would have other um, information about it. But it would give it to uh, the hazard rating for health, fire, reactivity. Uh, and it's, but in a way, it would go through all these different things to let you know about exposure um, and what you need to do if you became in contact with uh, the chemical. So this always should be kept up and should be used for our safety. Other type safeties, this is a special uh, um, device used for locking out uh, light switches. Basically you would take the screws out the cover, screw this to the cover, close it up and put a lock on it and tag it out. So um, if there's pieces of equipment that need to be um, locked out, and the only thing is a disconnected power is a switch, this can be used. It's a very good uh, use for making sure something stay off or on. For electrical safety, one thing we need to have, we deal with electricity on a daily basis. Using voltmeters to test equipment is important, but however, we need to understand that we will work with electrical current on a regular basis. This is a ground fault interruption device. Basically, this will be plugged into the wall.